Welcome back, everyone, to the Lobster Roll Weekly Series, Week 7. I'm your host, Dominic Rochette Fury, whichever you prefer, and I'm joined by Google Frog on co-commentating. And we are into the Grand right. Finals! And you're in a sign an A against Crow and Gorda. They're already banning things. They are already banning things. Maps, mostly. Specifically, Iski and Vantage are the first two to go. Now, this is a best of three for the Grand Finals, so the rule about not picking the map that you won on is in play, which, given the way that the map choosing rule is, it just means we're not going to get the same map twice in a row. Yep, we might see a map that isn't Vantage or Hourglass. We Although might. Although they could ban Hourglass. They, well, obviously, yes, that is definitely a, a, within the rules. No, no specific maps are favored. Well, if they ban Hourglass, there's going to be a weird mix. I mean, at this point, it's a near and a sign with the next ban. So if they ban Hourglass, that's... That'll be, you know... Can we win against Sea Cheese? Which would likely happen. Against Crow and Golda. Oh, Lonely... Okay, Lonely Waste has been banned. Yeah. I want to keep that safely banned. I almost wonder if Crow and Gold are going to try to force Shimmer Shore. Because they banned Hourglass, I'd expect that Zed or Firebreak would be way too... No, Firebreak is banned. Okay, oh, hey, there goes Firebreak. Yeah, I'm just thinking the C-Map thing lonely. would work, but Hourglass is now the favorite to pick. If they ban Hourglass, now it's a 50-50 between Shimmer Shore and Zed. Like, if an ear and a sign and I do, but they have no reason to do so. I probably want to ban Shimmer Shore. Don't want to deal with Gorda's C play, and don't want to have to fight against Zed. Nah, yep, and Shimmer is indeed what's been banned. So now, Zed and Hourglass, do they want an open map, or do they want a tiny front line? I think against Gorda and Crow, they probably want a tiny front line. Although that didn't work out for them before. Do they? Shoot, I'm trying to remember. I don't I don't think so, actually. So I'm trying to remember. I think they want a long front line. I think a they long do. game gives you time to stabilize against the air that might happen, which Crow's been doing. Mm hmm. A tiny front line gives. got a attention off on that whole front line. Well, the last match... Oh, right. Nier and Asana won it against Penwin and Saber. But they lost an Hourglass, so they might not want Hourglass. Because Nier and Asana did... Oh, no, it's... Sorry, Crow, Crow and Golda might want Hourglass because they won and they have the, they have the pick. Oh. Okay, no, they want to go for Zed. All right, then. We're going to be on Zed again. Wait. Where did the oh Crow got final pick? Because... Crow and Cody got final pick. But what happened to Hourglass? Or is it because Crow and Goddard have already played? No, 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 no. It's because they. I mean, no, it, that doesn't matter because it's two different series. Yeah. It's just that Crow is choosing Z is banning Hourglass, choosing yeah. Zed. It's the same action. Yeah. Well, they did lose Hourglass. Yes. That's yeah. what pushed them to the losers bracket. But that's. Oh, you're right. Yes, you're right. Yeah, yeah. Nier and Asinane won an Hourglass. So, yes, yeah. you're exactly right before when you said that the longer front line is better for a Nier and Asinane. That's so the that... game they lost. Yes. That's the game that uh, Gotti and Crow lost. Yeah. You can tell I had six hours sleep last night. All right. That's fine. Sleep is for me. I need sleep. I'm so tired. I shouldn't think this. This is too early to think this. No, I must stay awake. We might have six entire rounds. Who knows? Play all the maps. Uh, it doesn't work yeah. that way. Uh, it's the uh, the bracket reset uh, okay. resets that rule. The bracket reset. So that actually doesn't that doesn't work. Yeah. Also, it's the one you won on. So because the loser picks the next map, or because the loser has the final pick. 
the in a best of three series, after the first game, the loser gets effectively final pick. And sorry, the winner the winner gets effectively final pick. My bad. Loser gets first ban. So the winner gets effectively final pick, but the winner can't pick the map that they won on, which is the the previous map played. But in a best of three, that'll only ever be one map for each team at best. Yes. So ultimately, it's just you can't play the same map twice in a row, but you might still see it twice. Best of five, it changes things up, but best of three now. Or unless they both start getting desperate. I... And bring out the crazy stuff. That would be, well, that'd be a thing. <laughs> that'd be something to watch, that's for sure. I'd be it for that, Not, don't get me wrong. Just... Would be a, would be a thing to watch. Okay, so and the S9 are thinking. Mm -hmm. Got a quickly decided on jump jets, which is pretty good, I think. Those raids around the side, you can jump up the ramps instead of walking slowly up. Oh the ramp, yeah, no pff, ramps. Who needs ramps? Cool. They can jump off the cliff. It's mostly ramps, so you end up jumping up a ramp. Right, how but, you know, deep the speed is, the water? is good. The I don't water, know if the water path kills though. you. Oh well, that's that's definitely sure. unhelpful. Yeah, that that certainly puts a damper in the whole jumping up the puddle thing. Yeah. All right, so cloaky or shield spider against tank jump bot. Hey, four different factories on a map like this—that is a thing. All right, so definitely Crow and Goda going around. You're talking about that kind of two-pronged thing because tanks can only really go along that center, well, the center Z, while jump bots can go wherever. But then spiders have a similar whereverness yes. to them, and the shield bots. I mean, they can also kind of go wherever, but they're going to be less likely to just because they go up hills very slowly. Slowly up the ramp is bad. Yeah, it is from death. the north. It looks like the old shield ball. Uh, crab plan. I would small yeah. front. Crab's a good way of... It's got a good timing for breaking a small front. I mean, that is what... That is what actually won the game for Anira Sinan against Penwin and Saber on this map earlier in the in the winner's semis. So I fully yeah, so expect them to do that. That old plan is a decent plan. Goda is going heavily for a claim. Makes a bit of sense. I mean, it does, but it's also very energy heavy. Like, that's. Ogre. Ooh. Oh, of course. I mean, again, the tank has this much room to play, this tiny little box in the center little plateau to play with. You might as well go for Ogre. You're not going to get a lot of rating in. I mean, okay, I say that as they have a Kodachi, but then a Kodachi just doesn't do much. So, yeah, no. Case in point, Kodachis have no room to maneuver. Might as well go right, right to riots and assaults. Interestingly, we have just puppies setting up to defend those ramps. Not really meaningful besides scouting, but it's a thing, I guess. Scouting's good. Maybe get a free constructor. That's true. Man, Gorda is playing this very reclaim heavy. Sinone is definitely oh, responding in it's kind. Good but... Yeah, it is good reclaim. I mean, near rather responding in kind, but. Bandits coming in, but they are slow up that ramp. They don't really yeah. want to take a pyro to the face while they go up a ramp. I I think they could go up the ramp along the side and not get hit by the by the lotus, but against the pyro that would be suicide. So absolutely, yeah. They're so slow up that ramp. It's a steep ramp. It is. The pyro trying to come up the other side. Should have an easier time of doing so. Same time, Kodachi. Finding a little bit of pressure. Kind of pincery here. And the pyro gets to go up the ramp for free. How about that? The bandits... Okay, there they converge. That is a dead pyro. Nice micro from an ear. Well played, that. Same time, though, pyro over to the northwest side of the map, and not a whole lot is here to actually deal with it. There's a Venom, which has decided to just avoid the fight. And the Commander, which would be able to win. Same time, though, Nier and Sinone are taking the center very heavily. Yeah, although South, Scotty, and Crow have really consolidated the area nicely. True. They have 
Very true, Regen actually, and, yeah. Uh, Lotus on the side expansion. And not only... All of the metal extractors up for their sort of half of the map. Yeah, and that, as a result, they're now 37 to 24 in terms of metal income. Like 35, they do we don't take them. They do, well, they do. They do. But even without that, it's like 30. Still ahead. Oh, Oops, that being said, that might be speaking up. too soon, though. But the ogre is good. The ogre That's is critical. Actually, the thing that's keeping this alive. Yeah, that was a bit of a of a dive, losing all those bandits. That was a lot of a dive. The widow going down as well. They now have a felon, but without any friends for the felon. No, that's going to slow things down a bunch. Southwest, I think they're probably okay. Let me double check what's going oh. on here. Randy says overlay still up. Yep. Oh! Once a tournament. Sorry about that. Actually, it was not once a tournament. The last couple weeks I've been good about never having that up. Oh. Also grand finals. The other mistake oh. I make. Oh, well. This is grand finals. For the record, the bottom bar has just changed. Well, it's, we're good now. We we got that one out of the way. Shame it happened during grand that's finals, why it's a but best yeah. of three, right? Yeah, yeah no, so best of three. It's yeah, it's the three. it's the variance. It's the streamer variance. That's why you have best of three. It it cuts down on it. Okay, the story so far is the ogre's dead. <laughs> ogres have killed an attempt to kill a commander. And the map is stabilized along the lines that you would expect Zed to stabilize along. Yep. We've got the the emissary plan from the south. And the probably crab plan from the north, but the crab hasn't come in yet. Maybe they want to go around the side. Well, I don't think so. They haven't really built the necessary supporting army for the crab yet. I mean, I do agree with the ground the side assessment. That's definitely a thing that's being attempted. But the last time they played on this map earlier this tournament, they didn't build the crab until they had a, basically a stalemate on the front line. Like a solid, grindy stalemate with everyone shooting back and forth on the front line. Prior to that, they there never bothered with the crab. three emissaries, though, so they might have trouble making such a stalemate. I agree. There's a stinger up. Maybe they're going heavily into the shield bot plan. Two felons. No, they'll get like three or four felons before they start building a crab. Mark my words. That's what they did last time. The the emissaries aren't being all that aggressive though. So if they get timed with a crab. They might do. That's I mean good for them. The emissaries are gonna be grinding down the static defenses, so support units pretty quickly gonna be able to start pushing in and threatening the shield ball. Also remember the last game I saw the crab plan. Their opponent was stalling on morphing a geo, spending their resources, which they could have had for something similar to a crab. Fair enough. Well, that's not so likely now to happen now. they with investment in emissary instead. It's just all emissary. Gade is supporting the emissary. Yeah, and then we have the pyros. Just trying to defend the side with jump bots. Pyros and emissary there. Forwards. And, I mean, that's true, but at the same time. We're seeing a pretty heavy spider raid. It looks like it's maybe just trying to go around the sides. I mean, it's definitely avoiding the yeah, lotuses. Spiders might be trying to avoid the emissary. I mean, that's wise. They don't Which have a lot of options. Do quite easily. Yeah. Morphing a morphing an iris at the top. Interesting. Okay. You don't usually see that with um, the cloak, the, the shield bot plan. No. I mean, it would have worked well with the spider bot plan, but unfortunately the spider bot plan's already gone off, and it's having some issues. It, it's gone off in every sense of the phrase. Yeah, Losing it is most slightly of it. more ability to kill pyros there. Well, still, there's the cloak ball. There's the hermits. There's the Running severe of energy, lack of energy. Uh, well, the geo plant's almost uh, up. So fine. Almost up. That's fine. Yeah, they're good. Well, the area cloaker also blocks radar, which is relevant against. That's the true. Yeah, you already see the emissary is forced to come into visual range. Well, something's forced to come into visual range at least. 
Well, in this case, it is the, the emissaries because there isn't a whole lot else. I mean, the drones are there, but the pyros went along the side to defend against the spider assault. There's no other supporting forces. Unfortunately for Mumble Clan, they also don't have a huge amount of army to actually push in and really contest the emissaries or the static defenses with. This is where a crab would be handy. I don't expect that many emissaries. Well, okay, actually, we're seeing a roach you first. You can't really move the crab. That's you true. Can stop thing, things from attacking, but the fuel is already filling that role. Well, for now, the felons are able to get rid of some of the lotuses, but not enough. Unfortunately, yeah. the mix of cloaky and shield means there's not. They don't have Aspis to help support the shield ball. And looking at this, I mean, they have roaches coming in, so clearly they're trying to do a roach, or iris supported roach. If they get that onto the emissaries, there's nothing really stopping them. I mean, it's not like with a versus yeah. shield bot, you do have really nothing getting in your way. Or not roach. Looks snitch. like they're going for it. Snitch. But God is good about patrolling out the front of the emissaries. They do have puppies. Yeah, they got they had puppies around there. They have puppies, pyros, pyros now. Pyros, just stuff running around the front. Yeah, it's not Looks free like outlaws. It does look. They've dicey. got three and a half thousand in these non-crab spiders, which they really have to do something with, and they could do something with. Oh, there's the screening. Snitch getting taken yeah. out by the pyros. Unfortunate. The emissaries now are fully that's, confident going in. That's being thought of. And yep. Halted. Yeah, a little unfortunate that the felons weren't there in now. time. They don't. It's kind of unfortunate that the felons weren't up and fully charged in time to support the the snitches. Like that, if that was handled properly, it could have easily just pushed through and taken out the emissaries. But now, Golda and Crow are just—they're pushing in hard. They are not gonna let this go easy. Snitch, however, does come in, get rid of a couple moderators. That is a solid snitch. Made costs, got rid of some really important units to get rid of. They're going for an impaler. That uh, is understandable. I mean, there's a lot of. I mean, yeah, it get, gets rid of the emissaries, gets rid of some of the static defenses that are supporting them. on the emissaries to hit them, though. True. What I want to see is use the cloaker on the spiders and send the spiders up an unexpected vector to flank the emissaries on the side. That doesn't require a cloaker. <laughs> Look to the west side of the map. Uh, they would be scouted. I mean, they're the not going to do too much damage. Know, there's, there's a pyro to the north. Patrolling that route. I meant more. Their venom's attacking in the western side of the map right now. Ah, uh, yes, that vector. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm thinking more of running down the line of emissaries and killing them off. Oh, yeah, no, that that's actually that'd be really effective. That's true. Ooh, no, okay. oh, what? Oh, the Irish. The that's game. I, don't, I hate to call it so soon, but they just lost their their main strategy here. And uh, Southwest they just have widow and impaler. So they can actually, if the Widow doesn't run through and get itself decloaked. I am not confident. The screening has been extremely effective. A Widow is quite good at not getting spotted. All they need is vision and they can start using Impaler to kill off those emissaries. That's true, but again, the screening thus far from Golda has been immaculate and I don't see that Widow managing to evade it long enough to get the visual range needed. Nah, just put a widow near a cliff and it'll be pretty fine. Well, we'll see how it go. Wait. Uh, oh, the widow's still alive. Okay. Well, fair enough. There is that possibility. Still not quite close enough for visual range, though. There's two impalers. Two impalers, one shots. An emissary, if they can get the yeah. vision to do it. Well, Sino is the wrong side. working on it. I mean, they had to be. They were trying to evade screening. It needs to be on the north side. Oh, so I'm... they can actually. Yes, <laughs> yes, very much so. But yeah, it's that. I think they're just they were too worried about getting hit by the screeners. Now the Minotaur's coming in, eating up the felon shields. Four minute or three Minotaurs, a couple ogres, and a dozen emissaries. Nothing really now stopped they have them. Almost too much to do. They need to manage the aid. Uh, that was a I good, decent they, snitch. That was a good snitch. Yeah, that was the first good snitch they managed to. Oh, second good snitch. The uh, moderator is the there first goes one. The but yeah. Impalers are taken out by 
Pyro. No, that Maybe like both. I said, losing losing the Iris snitch just gave South the Crow and Golda enough confidence that they could push forward and take this all out. There yeah. is an assault coming from the west, a pretty sizable spider assault actually. But that is their Hail Mary pass, and I don't see that working. Like in the time that would take to do any damage. The crab didn't set up fast enough. Nope. That just gets killed by a few. Well, just by the emissaries. There's so many emissaries now. Yeah, I mean, the assault force coming in over from the western side is trying, but it's not contesting a base trade. That's the problem. That's not defending. There's no... It's, late, it's nowhere near. Trade, yeah, exactly. Bring that stuff back. So with that, this is looking like it's going to be it. Yeah, not a normal small team or 1v1 map. Nope. And, yeah, Gotti and Crow have come up with what you can do here. I think there was space to raid around with spiders. Pyro was there pretty was. good at stopping that. I mean, there, I mean, even with that, though, there was a lot of space just going just off-center. Like, right off the side, no, but off-center, maybe? Again, helps in dealing with the emissaries. I can see that it may have worked. Hmm. Anyhow, that is one game to go to and Crow. Of course, this is a best of three, so... They have to play more games, and they cannot play on Zed for their for the next well for the remainder of the series when they're choosing it. They cannot they choose it. Lose bracket too. They did so if they win the next map, they are going for bracket reset. Well, yeah. So that was what I was talking about—the danger of Godet's game knowledge on one front, just figuring out the the push. Yeah, well, again, though, that no, was sort of yeah, that was more they could have banned Zed. Probably should have banned Zed earlier because, as it is, that's not really an option. Like, they, the God and Crow got last banned, so they could just pick the map. So, it's like, the fact that Zed was in the pool was the problem. If, like, both banders and Hourglass had been kept in the pool, it would have been easier. But I think they banned... Did an area and I sign and they banned both? No, Crow banned Vantage. Okay. So, yeah, Zed just wasn't banned in response. Yeah, well, Vantage is a similar size, but has so many more effects. No, I mean, Crow banned Vantage. Like, Crow and Goda didn't want to play yes. in Vantage. Yes, it makes All right, makes so sense. for and this... they have this plan. Yeah. So, yeah, Zed is out. Well, it can't be picked at the end, and so it's effectively banned. All right, well, Izuki and Shimmer are out. Oops. Ah! Okay, so you're saying Zed is technically out. Yeah, because Anir and Anir and can just leave Golden and Crow with Zed yeah. and something else. Golden and Crow have yeah. last pick. They can't pick Zed. So it is like Zed is banned, and the other team has last pick. Yeah, except if if Anir and Asinane win, then Zed is effectively unbanned, but the map they won on is banned because they will get last pick. Yes. If we ever do best of five, I'm going to have to have a different marker for the winner. Like the winner can't ban or winner can't pick from just banned. But for now, with best of three, this works. Lonely Oasis and Fire Break. All right. So, so advantage in Hourglass. Advantage in Hourglass. Definitely advantage in Near and Sinai. Again, they just need to win two rounds and they've got this. Yes. And then. Yeah. 
Although I guess now that I think about it, Crow and Goda could burn a ban on Zed. Like, they can't pick it, but it's not banned from the pool. Yes. So, to force the others to pick it? I guess. To destabilize them, or let them tell Goddy and Crow where they were to play to give away their strategy. Yeah. Hourglass. That was not Hourglass. Okay. Well, hourglass it is. Honestly, I think it was just you can't play on a map that was played previously in that series. It'd be a better rule, but whatever. Would be a... <laughs> It'd be a much easier rule, rule to understand. rule that has more straightforward um, results. Yeah, because like I said, there, I, I can see there being some wonkiness where someone who can't... The winner team who can't pick that map ban chooses to ban it in order to throw off the ordering and maybe something could come out of that. I'm not sure, but seems yeah. like a possibility. It seems like the current rule is in effect you can't play on the same map, but but in theory can, there's a lot of shenanigans you, you can do around really it. Really feel like it. You can go. Yeah, it just it has extra steps to mostly do the same thing. Yeah, I think the it, approximation of the rule would be you can't play on the right same map. Yeah, I mean I know why it's it, it's Porter from Smash Bros. and I mean yeah, it's got the word stage at the bottom. Yeah, for one thing. No, it's it's ported from Smash Bros. And I honestly haven't played a lot of competitive Smash Ultimate. I played Smash 4 for a bit, but not Ultimate much. So I'm not entirely sure what the logic is, because when I was playing Smash 4, it was just the... Like, you just can't play on that map, I think. It was yep. just, just the one. one and Smash would be, a lot, would be a lot more matches per series, surely. It's yeah, it's, it's usually best of three in the main bracket and then best of five near the end. And also in Ultimate, there's, like, I rather ironically, despite the number of maps and the sheer variety of maps, there's actually I think only like five or se five or seven maps that are considered reasonably playable, like actually fair. And right. mostly that's Pokemon Stadium Two. Last I checked. Oh, there's the overlay. What? Okay, someone's going for double Hovercraft Factory. That's uh, Crow. What that? Uh, it's just just a Q. Uh, and you're going for mobility. That's a miss Q if I ever saw one. Yeah, hovercraft and rovers. Well, he could be communicating with it, saying one factory there, one factory there. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Got to put some marker on the um on the standard front factory point. Yeah. Drawing some arrows to the left though. Maybe they wanted. Go hard on the left. Mm. Got a opting to go just in the normal kind of place. Yep. And it's actually a mirror. Yep, everyone's stuck with the factories they were plopping. All right, so we have Hover Rover versus Hover Rover. And go to starting out kind of economical again. Though, going back instead of forward... That wasn't go to they went for the last time, but still, it's that that much safer expansion pattern coming out of Golda. Well, wait a sec. Why is Crow going for hover and Golda going for rovers? That seems backwards. That's not normal Crow at all. To, um, the maybe they have a plan. They must have a plan because this is this is kind Crow of odd. Does like dagger a lot. Golda Golda is pretty much defined. For a long time by their dagger play. Back when Red Comet was Maybe. a map people played on. Well, okay, it was a map that was in the matchmaker or the tournaments. People still play on it when they get the chance, but, you know, gotta have variety. Anyhow. Hover be hover coming in here. Starting out. A little shaky for a crow. Quite able to get in, though, with the dart, which is nice, but, yeah, crow a little shaky on the hovers. I mean, unless maybe they're trying to confuse their opponents, making them think that Golda and Crow are the other player. I don't know. The player list does exist. It does exist, but maybe they're assuming their opponents aren't going to look at it. I don't know. God, I seems to be going expansion heavy. Or, and reclaim heavy. Well, they did that last time, too. It's entirely unsurprising. But with... 
That being said, it doesn't appear that they're managing to get a whole lot of harassment in, so that's the only thing they really have going for them is the expansions. Momo Clan, however, is way ahead economically. Crow's been much slower to build up in their corner, like in the northeast corner, and now they're going to be running into the fact that they've lost a lot oh, of yes. map control. Been focusing on dagger. Yeah, dagger micro is not an easy thing to do. But they're already going for another plate, so he's looking to go into more units. He's really taken to plates to spam out the raiders. I'm glad to see they're getting use. I mean, that's kind of yeah, what they're for. Pretty well. Yeah, and that. Speaking of raiders, we definitely have a nice solid raid shaving up here. Sign in a not in the best position when it comes to that one scorcher, but still, as it's a distraction for the daggers, it, it is not necessarily effective because there's enough radar coverage that it's not going to be able to get in for free. Mumble certainly has the map control advantage. Absolutely. But Northeast has a bit more expansion. They do, but it's not... For now. Yeah, it's hard to say it's have it under control. I mean, there's a couple Scorchers coming in from Northeast that aren't going to be running into any real resistance. There is nothing going on in the main base to stop these. Granted, at the same time... Yeah, that is a worry. I mean, maybe the idea is... The Mason there sitting them back. on the build pad. Yeah. The Daggers here are at least going to get a lot of damage done. And one yeah. of them did make the unwise choice of moving next to a Simonese commander who can just jump in and kill it. But, or His just walk in. Could die. Whoa, that was uncharacteristic misplay from Gota there. I mean, so the factory is completely out of out of defenders. There's yeah. a dagger coming in, but fortunately the daggers over that were harassing in the northeast have been taken out. And this factory this is, is dead. The factory's done. That is a really tough blow coming in there from Mumble Clan right off the bat. Uh, I mean, I think they're still fine though. All that bad. It, I mean, it's not. It's not game ending. They're gonna. The, they can quickly redirect. Yeah, redirect they have the the resources to the other land factory. Yeah, they do have the caretakers there. It's They've still a blow part, though. It's still it's still painful. It's quite a blow. But I the think commander came back. Oh, they're rebuilding the same factory. I don't know. Mm. At this point, I might have just gone into air, take it as a sign to do air and escalate. They've got the hovercraft factory, which is decent enough. Yeah. Well, they did also get rid of a mason. So, uh, it's close to the factory, mind you. Not the biggest loss, but it is still a time loss on the part of Northeast for reclaim. So, Mumble Clan's maintaining a reasonably even position, all things considered. Army value-wise... Maybe God, I think, the Scorchers yeah, they're way good ahead. enough now to compete with Hover. Apparently. I can't say they're wrong. Dagger still seems like it's doing some good work. It is faster for one. I think the reason is because Metal Extractor's got a health buff. I mean, that was a year ago, but still. Like, Metal yeah, Extractor health. Run through. Yeah, you can't run through with four daggers and to, just kill them all. To come and um, solve that. Yeah, more, more expansion for Northeast, although Reclaim is still fluctuating a bit. Yeah, but at the same time, Mumble Clan is getting consistent reclaim, and isn't Mumble Clan really went for the naked expansion strategy? They thought we have the hovers, we have the map control, we can expand out and not put any Lotus. They Whereas did. Got in Crow. We've made a bunch of Lotus. Ooh, they saved the Mason though. Oh, that's quite good. Can we expand with that? Very easily. But now they probably want to get a few Lotus behind it. Not at the time, but you know, it's a few. Yeah, no, that's definitely what they're doing the now. Time, but doing a bit now just so they can hold on to their advantage because they can't have map control forever. No, but it looks like the north side is getting heavily threatened. Dagger Scorch is coming in. A nearest commander in a, in a great spot to avoid getting taken out by it, but also not in a great spot to actually set up proper defenses. Oh, defenses on the hills are okay. Yeah, actually, never mind, though. They've bought enough time. That's the important thing. The rest of the force is able to come in. The bull is able to wipe out the Scorchers. That is that is enough. Pulls back the assaults. And bull is showing why they are so popular. Daggers are good, but bull is to slow everything down. And there you can't argue with slow. 
It's still worrying for Mumble Clan. Uh, well, yeah, they're Northeast not. Northeast is now defended all the way down to the bottom right. Yeah, they're definitely That's pretty well expanded. Definitely have to compete with that. Eight, eight free metal extractors for the top left. So they're far from parity. Mm. Well, it's not only that. There's 16 metal per second available, and Northeast, although Northeast does have a pretty strong way of holding on to it, the fact that Mumble Clan hasn't taken it and is still relatively even economically is a strong showing for Reclaim. Like, Mumble Clan could yes. get an advantage once Doing they take these. Doing all these fights in their area is a different way to get Reclaim. Yeah, and they're taking advantage of it. So Mumble Clan, honestly, doesn't need that expansion quite yet. Seven Masons coming in. They're going to quickly run out of Reclaim to, to absorb. What do you have for Reclaim? 424? Yeah, that would be too much. That's, that's going to last for all of eight seconds. Although, they have to move around to get there. It's still good. Yeah, at so it's eight seconds. If you do the math, it's actually more like six seconds. <laughs> and SNA switching into a... Well, actually, stopped building units. I oh, know, he's started back with the units. Switching into rippers, though. To a, yep, a slower rover force. Perhaps to take out all these loaders. Oh, and near that is so risky. Oh, man, that commander mm -hmm. is... That commander is very likely dead. That commander... Oh, it's jumps uh, coming back online. Uh, no, it's not reckon. gonna be near the cliff in time, though. Slow uh, didn't hit... Oh, it. there it is. The slow... The it. dart didn't hit it. It had the chance. It got out. Got lucky about that dart, though. The slow beam had, not, had nailed it. That commander would be dead. Would have been a lot closer, for sure. And now, with that, that does open things up for the bulls to get back in here and take okay. out more raiders. and. SNA's heavy push Oof. into south. It's doing it's, something, although... It is. It's kind of... Actually, it's being quite efficient. I don't know. It, it's paying a price, but it's gotten rid of all the lotuses. Unfortunately, yeah, it hasn't gotten rid of much Mason's else. Gonna build more lotuses. Yeah, that's the main thing it hasn't gotten rid of is the Mason. But it still has a lot of stuff. The, the Scorch can still go around take out that... Oh, they can't take out that lotus. It's too high up. They could hit it, but it wouldn't be efficient. Yeah, the damage will be very low. They deal less, less yeah. damage at range. Oh, it's a weird feature this map. No. Oh, but the line of sight works out for them. So, hey, it's it another dead They're metal expansion? Deep. Yeah, dead metal yeah. extractor. All right. So, northeast still maintains... It's still even. That's the problem, though. It's like... I keep saying, oh, yeah, they're even. Yeah, they're even. Yeah, they're even. But if you look at the map control, northeast is really taking the map control hard. Yeah, well, look at this. Base. I know the, the center it's base. Just a bunch of lotus doing some reclaim. Yeah, that, that's... I want to see SMA make a real whole bunch of ravages because you can just roll over lotus forests. And with the ripper support on top of that, yeah, that'd be perfect. Although, yeah. I mean, the fencer ripper isn't a bad idea either. It's definitely a safer choice. Fencer does it more efficiently, but Slower. slowly. Yeah. I think they really want to deal with stuff and then move on. Because by the time they kill one area of lotuses, the other area might be better defended. There might be more support units. I mean, yeah, look at the amount of lotuses that have been built up here. It's just... There's no way through it without, like, sacrificing units or at least putting them in harm's way. That being said, the northwest... It Quite looks a few mace kind of secure. Though. Maybe the mace is looking to roll over those lotuses. Four mace. Definitely. Yeah, that, that would be easy. There's a few Scorches coming in. Actually, all the Scorches are grouping up. That could be trouble. Hmm. I think Mumble Clan's a little overextended in the north. They've got a faster army against a slower army, which is always a bit of a worry. Yeah, it's pretty clear to me that the Maces are being used as a distraction force. Like, they're not trying to defend the north. They're trying to force the northern army to reposition. Like, force uh, northeast northern army to reposition. That's clearly the play. They've got such a good defensive spot. In north. Is it such a good staging point? We've got Commander, Mace, some slow units have arrived. Yeah. But I think they just want to make sure they don't sure have to about deal with that. But I don't I I agree, this, this is a little bit fight, questionable. It seems like it might be a distraction to try and push in the bottom. Well, it seems to be Goddess working. Commander going ah, Goddess Ooh. Commander did go down. Leveler on top of that. I'm sorry, buddy. Um so now the fences can just sort of go through those lotus. So the distraction in the middle did work. Absolutely, worked beautifully. Some of the some of the reinforcements. 
Yeah. It's and just... now those masons have more to reclaim from earlier. 2,000 or so metal to get there. Mm hmm So with that, the masons are looking like they're... I mean, they're basically going to turn this entire game around. Like, Mumble Clan was... Like I said, they're constantly kind of maintaining parity without much territory. Now they've got that territory and still have the reclaim. I mean, well, 20 metal per second ahead. Well, actually dead even. Because the difference of about oh, yeah. 2,000 reclaim and about 3,000 overdrive towards Mumble Clan. So there's this advanced geo. There's a lot more energy for Mumble Clan. They've got overdrive for about plus 17 or so. Well, that's a fair point, and I suppose I didn't really take that into account. But Oh, there's some halberds. They've finally had enough of this middle base. The halberds are just going to go in and clean that up. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, though, we're looking at the economy now. Mumble Clan's got double. Metal produced is... was even. Now it's... And now it's starting it's to get his Commander might be going down. He jumped into Scorches instead of away from Scorches. Yep. Well, yep. That is that is a sign of his commander. The map might have changed sides again. Oh, no, there's nothing. No, there's, the too much, there's too many support. That that commander wasn't that relevant. Yeah, masons are there. Scorches are there. Do you need a commander when you have seven masons? No. They just build Lotus and you're fine. This back over the north is certainly still a concern, though. North is changing hands. Which makes sense. I mean, South's changed hands already, but the problem is that Mumble Clan has twice the economy. They soon become twice the army. They play it right. And they have the attrition advantage on top of that. There is a big chunk of reclaim in the middle center, north of the middle. Where the, yeah. all the maces have found graves there. Many of the maces and bolas found graves there, so that something to grab. Actually, that's how the north side changed hands. Saw them mm -hmm. from an east-west split to a north-south split. Northeast should be able to actually get their economy in a relatively good position as a result. Ah, uh, here's some ravages from Godet. Yep, going against the rippers and fencers. Having a tough time managing it, but, you know. That was efficient. I think the ravages... I should say, having the Mumble Clan is having a hard time defending. The Ravagers did a great job. The Ravagers were absolutely what they needed. Fencers along the front line still providing a lot of pressure, but... Ah, okay. I call it, I call it defense when your base is being attacked. Not when you're trying to stop <laughs> your attacking force, which is attacking the enemy base, from being attacked. It's defending the attack. I don't know. Okay. It's preemptive defense. It's how attacking works. Although most of Northeast's forces were on the left and got wiped out. A large ball of slashes, I guess, fences, were there. <laughs> Sorry, I just... <laughs> I'm trying to maintain composure, but Chet is noticing the fact that my cat has been meowing. I've been trying to, you know, pet him a little bit, but it's just... The timing of my responses ends up being just... Yeah. I'll have to double-check what's up after this match. Which looks like it will be going in favor of Mumble Clan, so we're going to be moving on to Game 3 most likely. Short of a most major likely. shift in play. Mumble Clan has the overdrive. They've got about half the reclaim. There's Most of the reclaim on the map is still pretty contested. It's towards the northeast side, but the Mumble Clan are pushing in control that way. Well, I don't know if the Mumble Clan has to worry about much in the way of actual opponents, though. I mean, there's one mace, a few Ravagers, but the Bulls just take care of the Ravagers, and they can stop the Scorchers yeah, from doing too much damage. Is, yeah, so the fish is significantly higher for army value. Yeah, and that's showing. Bolus. Bolus, like that's that slow beam. Damage. It doesn't, but the slow beam just keeps them highly efficient. So they deal damage fast enough. How fast they can actually kill a base. Well, we'll find out. I mean, granted, these are 1,500 plates. health each, so it's not much. Yeah, they can still kill some plates. Yeah, I don't know. The Scorchers are doing a number on them. Yeah. But still, that buys time for reinforcements. More of a claim to them if they can use it. This advanced year, I think, was a real, really important thing. Because it just gives you overdrive, gives you freedom to use whatever acclaim you can immediately. Yeah, that... 
And we see already Mama Clan just made full use of that. They had plenty of caretakers. They had the Geo for power. Yeah. They've got... What if I add it up? 110 build power on all their factories. Do they? Oh, yeah. So they can easily... Oh, yeah. Easily 120, take actually. They use. Count the factories themselves, too. Actually, more than that, yeah. 130, because they have a couple... Oh, no, the Masons aren't doing anything, so it's not 120. So, yeah, they're good for the rest of the game. And already, and Gorda's base. And they powerful rover ball with the... Yep, inside yeah, of Gorda's base. Right there. Killing their dudes. And that should be... I mean, Crow is trying to come in and save the day. Their commander, not having a happy time. Bullas are making that commander very threatened while Gorda's base stares at, down the barrel of death. Yeah, I think they need that base to win. I agree, yeah, no, it's this base, this forward base here is the only thing really providing map control. If it weren't for that, because, like, Crow is focused entirely on the north, basically the entire north edge. But Gold has been the one really pushing map control over to the south, and without that base, there's nothing really presenting a threat at all to the southeast side of the map. Yeah, thinking about resigning. And, yeah, they're resigning. That is so game. game three. We're moving, yep, indeed, we're moving on to game three. A, a map that probably, but is not definitely, not one of those last two. Well, it could be Zed. Zed is a valid option. That's the weird part about the rule. Ah, uh, yes, because they lost, so they're making sure that, but oh, they might ban it. I reckon they might ban that. I would. But it's not auto ban is the point. It is not. All right. Okay, well, one sec. Need to please entertain the crowd. I need to figure out what my cat is wanting. Oh, I can't even show the, gra the graphs, though. Yeah, you can really see the overdrive difference. Sharp inflection when the Geo comes online. So that was pretty impressive, holding on with Reclaim and Overdrive. And they were slightly down on map control because the bottom right was real trouble. The bottom right was blocked down by Gode, and they, there was nothing in the top left. Quite well done. Okay, so Hourglass is not on. If I'm figuring this out properly. Okay. Banning is key. Okay. And Lonely okay. Wasted. And we can actually show that Iski and Lonely Oasis are banned. That's not Iski. Banning not Shimashore. I expect one of the next two bands would be Zed. Probably. Could be Firebreak. We could be on Firebreak, you're right. Oh yeah, because Hourglass is is soft banned. Yes. Okay, and for those of you wondering, my cat just wanted to have someone nearby when they were eating because he gets... He gets skittish sometimes with eating because he was an outdoor cat for a while. Like, I only adopted him a few months ago. So, he, I think he's still sometimes scared that he might have something jump on him while he's eating. Okay. Yeah. No, I had a cat for a long time who was like that, as in, you'd have to go and show them their food. The food would be there. They just want to have the food shown to them. Or at least have you nearby. It's like, okay, well, you're going to yeah. protect me. You're not going to let me... You're not going to let something try to kill me. Yeah, the band Shimashore. Hmm. Yeah, well, that was a while ago. Yeah, that, that was some time ago, yeah. Oh, Vantage. Okay. Uh, Vantage. So now... <laughs> Zed or Firebreak. Crow is asking, any of us name to play Zed or Firebreak? Do you want to play Zed or Firebreak as a 2v2? That's a good question. Yep.
I wonder if you can go ships. Surely you can't. Well, mm -hmm. maybe if you make ships, but you put most of the build power onto the other factory and then make an envoy or something, or make amp, amp as well and just use lobster to lob Corsairs into their base. Well, oh wait, oh, I get the... No, Crouch just become confused by his by own rule, which is... Oh, the question is... Oh yeah, that's a fair point. I hadn't thought about that. Uh, Zed, if, yeah, if it's up to a crow for the last one, they have to go for hourglass. If it's... But Anir gets the last pick. So that just sort of means that... Oh, okay. Know. No, no. We're, we've got to change DSR. But then if you had a... Like a, a best of seven, would that just mean you'd ping pong between two maps? <laughs> Well, look, it's if it's a best of seven, then if it's just you can't play a stage that had been played before, then you just play all seven stages. I mean, under these rules, under the rules that are at the moment. Under right? these rules, no, no, because the number, no, because what happens is that you end up having multiple maps. Like if there were, if it was best of seven and game seven, each side would have three maps they can't pick, which would. Yes, but if you alternate with the losing maps. Yeah, but the thing is, they might you pick. Can always force if you lose you can force oh i see what you mean yeah yeah fair well. enough yes that is a possibility this is i don't even okay whatever we're uh, despite oh, yeah Saints from new zealand he's two hours ahead of me so he got off at four okay <laughs> i am just utterly whatever we're on hourglass we got to change this rule nah. Because if the, the tournament, if the tournament organizer can't figure out what the heck it means, then it's hopeless. The rules do mean a unique thing, which is a silly thing, but... Well, yeah, they have a meaning. They have very specific meaning. It's just a stupid one. Yeah. I mean, granted, this sort of thing is legit. I think the problem is if we were doing... Because the one thing that Smash does that we're not doing, which is fine, is that with Smash, it's like, it's usually you ban a certain number of maps, and then you have a few maps to pick from, and so it makes yes. sense that the winner can't pick a map, because there's yeah, multiple maps to pick. Yeah, down to one. Yeah, then it just becomes so, this we weird... Same game? It, no, it's... we have... We have a different game. <sighs> Rovers and Cloak against Rovers and Tank. Yep, and that is going to be... Let's see, we have... So, rovers... Northeast. Okay, we have Crow going for the tank, too. Code's way at the top. So, what if, the heck? If Gotta and Crow win this, then... Bracket reset. We have another best of three. Yep, no, that's right. If SM and win this, then they've won the tournament. That's correct. But they have lost a game, so... No one's perfected the tournament. That is also correct. But if any other sign they win, they will they will have won without having dropped in the bracket yes. at all. But you'd think that would be slightly more likely anyway. I don't know. I mean this is a pretty pretty even match, honestly. But then again, Hourglass has already seen Anir and Sinone have won against Golden and Crow twice on Hourglass. I mean, in tournaments in general. Oh, and oh my goodness. Oh, Crow. Uh, oh, not Crow. Golda, I'm so sorry. Just lost a Mason right off the bat. That is a huge loss. And at the same time, Dark coming around the back. Possibly take out the other Mason. Oh. I always say kill the Masons because it reduces the rebuild time, or increases the rebuild time. Yeah. That is Dart. A Dart shooting in a mech slows down the production. That's true. That's actually, it's a weird quirk of behavior and more, worth pointing out, but yeah. You can cut the the production of mechs down to half by hitting them with a slow beam. How much time do you have to spend hitting a mechs before you've made cost? Once. Nah, not that. Oh, sorry, how much time does it have to be slowed down for? Uh, yeah, they, uh, it's 40. 40 seconds. Yeah, 40 seconds. So you have to hit it. Yeah, so 
maybe not hit it 40 you times, but... Oh, well. Uh, that's the, I don't know, that's a tough call. Would you? 35 damage, a, okay, I don't know. 35 damage a second. Against 640. Uh, you would... Yes. You would, that's yes. Like After 20, yeah. Yeah, it would be. So you'd make cost by killing it. <laughs> it's the easiest way to make cost. You run cost. past and hit 40 maxes with the slow beam. Yes. There you go. But we're not playing a comic yeah, catcher, so thank god. Like, looks like Mumble Clan has gained the back control. So uh, did last time. They have, but Gorda did some nice retreat micro there and kind of got back some of the attrition they lost. So, while so the, the big change is Crow started, Crow started uh, more forwards in the top right. Yep. Instead of starting all on the five, getting the five mexes, they thought we can get those five mexes later. We can send the commander across really quickly. And that was, I think, a good play. Today's commander going south really quickly as well. Yeah, I, I agree with that play. We don't see has already built the geo. Yeah, but assign an A. Basic geo. Yeah, and that's where Asanane's commander was. So the corners are being pretty quickly taken by the northeast side, and that is that is a huge economic difference. And something I often say about when Golda plays is that Golda's micro is is top notch. So if you can win on macro, you have a chance. But if you are losing on macro, you're probably screwed. Uh, but look, these these glaives are wandering around. Yep. And if, ooh, they won't do much damage, but they have forced a response. <laughs> and that response has been actually. Not as effective as it might need to be. Mumble Clan's not really falling behind. No. Yeah. It's, um, causing all of those raiders to run away into the corner of the, the map for 20 seconds is worth a lot. That's Let's true. That's true. Your turret. Let's them bring up their own units behind. And they could have mechs off it. Uh, that takes a while to rebuild. No constructors nearby. Yep. So, yeah, okay. So Mumble Clan did actually get quite a bit of value off that. Although, they are... Losing a lot on attrition here and there. Ah, oh, nearest commander. Okay, it jumped. It's fine. It jumped. Like it does. Although it's still being hit. Barely, but yes. Line of sight is a weird thing. Although a near can just move back like two steps and then, be totally safe. Cliff. You can hit things on the edge of the cliffs. If he wants to have health, he could step a small amount. Yep. Like I said. They're already morphing their geo. Although... Well, that's super that risky. Scorcher, Scorcher can damage it. it, but can't mm. actually get up there. Ah, I didn't yeah. see it. Threw my back on the bit of the hill. Okay, well that's useful then. Still though, very yeah, much. Geo... Okay, that geo should be quite good. It should, but man, this is a knife fight trying to get that geo set up and not lose too much in the process. Because of course that means there's yes. fewer units being built. Yeah, Northeast has taken the map off it. That top yep. left has been taken very quickly. Yeah, the top left is completely in the open. Back. Top right, oh, sorry, top bottom right is going to be easier for Mumble Clan to take, so we'll probably see a north south switch, or north south, not switch, north south split pretty quickly, I would expect. But Potentially. I think after this Geo, yeah, S9 scored right into. Ripper and Fencer. Yeah, so this is going to be... Not only that, Scorchers right. are already in position. They're just... There's nothing really stopping them either. Fencers are coming in, but Fencers don't exactly beat Scorchers unless they got numbers on their side. Which they don't. Yes. And more Glaives coming in here. Blitzes cannot do enough. Not enough... Not, no splash damage, so yeah. Not really an option. And it oh, a bit of time. that's I don't know. They bought some time. They bought enough time, but the thing is, they also distracted a bunch of the scorchers they just mentioned earlier. Which, well, that's gonna help when it comes to setting up this raid over to the south. Scorchers over here. Though. Ooh, scorchers and we and welder. Wow. Crow is just just gives. No care whatsoever. Just moves that welder in. He's like, you know what? Fine. I will just build into your base because my builder has lasers. I think that welder was trying to go somewhere 
that it couldn't. It was told ah. to go somewhere it couldn't and got a little confused. I like my story better, but you're probably right. <laughs> well, I mean, not a bad set of reclaim. That wasn't that was not worth it. That that metal extractor, honestly, a worthy decoy there. Same time though, we are seeing a near managing to take that north side slowly but surely. Take it, but northeast. Oh, they're oof. they're even ahead with reclaim. That's what they need to do now. Yeah, that's the one thing that's kind of holding them back because they have a ton of reclaim. They're still accessing it. They how much are they even using? 20, 30. They're using thirty build power. That's it. Whereas Mumble Clan is using fifty on units and then another twelve or fifteen or so on building stuff. They're not accessing. So this is actually, again, despite the economic disadvantage, Mumble Clan is doing fine. I mean, okay, they're doing fine in terms of the numbers. They're not necessarily doing fine in terms of map position. These codas in the back are posing a problem. But if you notice, the codas in the back are posing a problem. But they're going to get torn apart by the fencers. Look at the northwest. There's fewer and fewer supporting forces. Crow's entire supporting forces are going into raids without having any real backup. So the north side's just yeah, getting just persistently weaker. Archie. Yeah, and the north side is losing yes, no, defensive forces. Yeah, and all God has got is Scorcher against this SNA's army of... slower army of um, turret pushers. Yeah, but they're turret pushers. They push... They, they're going to be forcing... the. They're going to be forcing a response from Golda. Like, Golda can't just try to run circles around them. They're going to lose their base if they do. And of course, Crow, they really have not got much left over to the north, and ultimately that is going to mean the Glaives can just tear apart the Kodachis. And Anira's microing out well enough. Oh, a little iffy though, losing quite a few Glaives, but got rid of the Lotus for free. Same time over to the south. A little tricky though, nice surround with the fencers. Actually making that very difficult for, for Sinanay to do much with it. Losing a lot of their force, so it's yeah, a bit of a trade. Is... I think it's worse for Mumble Clan to lose their whole force. Yeah, no, they have the lower, they have a weaker North economy. Northeast currently has the metal. Yeah. he has realized he should build building energy, but he, oh no, he cancelled it. Hey, he's getting what a mason to build some wind generators. It's not quite the scale up he needs. No, do have a knight coming in, but it's, feels too little, too late almost. This losing that force, the sign they losing that force, uh, if. If Gota and Crow take this, that will be the point in the game that it all went to it all went to hell for them. That's just Yes. Like they well, have, can rebuild that force. They can. I don't yeah. I, I'm not saying that okay. Gota and Crow are gonna win off that. I'm just saying that it, that that it will take some it'll take some doing for Mumble Clan to get themselves into more in a stronger position. Though admittedly, their attacks on the north side are being quite efficient, and Anira has been slowly but steadily building up the north in expansions. And yeah, that will fall quite soon. So with that, we'll just get an uh, east-west split. Switch to it too. Switch to ogres. It with the Kadachi bit a bit late. Uh, I don't think there's any way to get into this. The, the ogre won't be here before this base is lost. That's well, really what it comes down to. to think that Scorcher will fight into Ripper. Well, with some fencer, you know. Yeah, maybe. There's I mean, the fencer's for the, getting rid of the Ripper, but if the Ripper gets in range of the Scorcher at all, the Scorcher Ball's dead. And yeah, there it is. Yeah. The base has fallen over to the north. The it Ogre has come in. Out. Doesn't matter. Crow's commander is able to survive thanks to their lightning rifle, but that's it. And now with backup... Oh, no. The, the Ogre's in position. They'll be safe. Still, though, the north side is basically under Anir's control, but then again... Rodin is pretty good against Ogre. Yep. Oh, oh man, the Reavers. Oh, the efficiency on those Reavers. How much reclaim is... 1.2k uh, reclaim. Oh, that's gotta hurt. Yeah, most of them got wrecked. Well, not wrecked, jibbed. <laughs> oh, so yeah, they, got, they got more than wrecked. But... Yeah, you can't really throw away that force. Well, no nope. Chance they got a factory. I don't know. Night got okay. The ogre's down. Not enough time for the for backup forces to come in, but again, it's just now the impalers are in. Kind of push back the fencers. 
Scorchers have all died. There's a lot of Lotuses, but the Impalers counter those handily. And the north side, bit of a brawl. Looks like Crow is managing to push back pretty effectively. Although it kind of comes down to how these Scorchers work. Code is coming around the side as well. It's another problem that comes in. Glaives are going to have a bit of a hard time taking that out. All the Ronin go down. That is huge. That's basically a near force to retreat off that. The commander needs to jump away, like, now. And indeed they do. Be able to build, you know, unless the fences come in really quickly. I don't think Crow's going to push in that hard. Hmm. Same time as I'm in his commander. Okay. Well, yeah, okay. The build power wasn't there. Nope. Okay, now Mongol Clan is in trouble off what's happened in the south. Scorch Offensor has pushed in. And it's looking... I mean, and the Crow I... has pushed back the, the Cloakies. Yeah, that's the, the, help those fencers. the fencers. See these fencers that were shared to him. Very and important I, to Yeah, that's why I saw those. As soon as I saw those, I thought it's entirely going to come down to whether or not the Ronin can deal with anything else, while the, or the fencers, while the fencers bound on them, and then the rest of the forces just got yeah. rid of the Ronins immediately. So at that point, or Ronin. Uh, there's, there's a fence, so fence killing a stinger. Because the stinger is a laser, and we all know lasers yep. have spherical range. As Anarchid is pointing out in the labels. Yeah. So yeah, spherical and range so means I that height... Care about. Height is... It, it's it, it matters how high up it is. Missiles yeah. don't a care. doesn't matter. A torch doesn't care which direction you point it in. It's the the point where the light arbitrarily stops is the same. Which, yeah. you know, as we all know, physics. Exactly, yeah. But missiles use GPS, so don't care about spheres. They are a big cylinder. Yep. And then you have yeah. ballistic weapons, which are this weird kind of cone thing. Uh, ballistas, they're just, yeah, or parabolas. Something like that. Got a keeps throwing scorches into their base, which does destabilize them a bit, but also gives them reclaim. Uh, it's not enough. These scorches, no, these scorches are going to wipe out most of the back line. The, fen the Ripper won't be they able will, to take care of them. Will. They will. Oh no, they're retreating! That was... I might still work though. The fencers... Yeah, the Ripper's gonna be go down, but that does buy time for the rest of them to come in. Oof. But there is a cloaky army at the same time smashing into Gode. That is very true. And that smashing... There's not a lot defending the smashing. Is, is Exelane trying to take out Gode's factories? He's got two impalers coming I don't he could make know. A it's a, it's make not a, a bad idea, but I think that, it's not a bad idea. But I think, I think they're trying to just get rid of the lotuses. Yeah, oh, yeah. oh they got flanked. They got flanked. Oof. But Riffer, Riffer is not bad against being flanked. Very true. Oh, and Anis oh. commander might even go down. Oh no, he's buried himself in a hole on a <laughs> on against <laughs> yep. vehicles. Just don't bury yourself too far. You knock the walls down of the cliff and you lose the protection. Oh, sheesh. He's getting close to that point, actually. Oh, and Mumble Clan's actually accessing energy because they lost the geothermal the, is yep. not attached. Yeah, they, they lost the pylon that was making it attached to the rest of it. I don't know. That disruption is so opening things completely up. Completely the way. What the heck are you... Are you still digging? Why don't you go all the way to water? Well, what if a spider comes up there? What uh, if a spider comes up there? <laughs> Okay, fair enough. Or a raven, that's true. Fair enough. Although, Gade has an aeroplane plan for the last few minutes. He's getting himself a... Oh, no, he's already got himself a Thunderbird. Yeah, that's the south side to taken. Go very well uh... with your Scorcher strategy. Northeast, I don't think, has any way back in this. Not gonna lie. There's they've... a lot of ogres. Yeah, it's a lot of ogres. Not a lot of forces to counter them. Yeah. I Dachi. don't see it. I just don't see it. I think this is gonna be the push. Like, Crow coming around the back ship a bracket reset real soon. Yeah, it's all ogre. It is all ogre. And a fencer. Ah, stunning that factory. is. I like that move. Uh, the factory and all the caretakers, because why not? Yeah, well, it stops them from I'm setting up defenses. Suddenly yep. to deal with the ogre. You know, 
yeah. this side could have easily boosted themselves a sting out, right? Exactly. So take out this caretaker's too. And the all works out. would not have killed that many ogres, but it would have made a lot of reclaim. Yeah. I mean, they're still fighting. They're still trying to get to the top. I mean, granted, it makes sense, but Anir, yeah, Anir is done. Assign an A has hope. They're holding out hope, but no, their commanders went down, and that should oh, likely be it. That yeah. Very good tanks. Wow. That was. The way back. Yeah, that was like that. That looked kind of shaky at first, but they got it eventually. Let's look at them specifically. They were oh, not too bad. Twenty-seven point seven metal reek. I'm kind of in the middle. Use the least metal, though. They actually accessed quite a bit. They were the only one to yes, access, in fact. 1,500. Yeah, 32 energy across the board, pretty much. With God, I using the most. Probably because of the excess metal going towards him. Probably. Which he could barely use, because their energy income was about equal to their metal income. Well, Goddess was higher at 65, although it was their metal income. Yeah, 33. Yeah, look at the sharp reflection of the overdrive graph, and then... And flex back again when that um, geo gets disconnected by the. Oh yeah, the back. yeah, it's the Mumble Clan one. Yeah, mm. army value was pretty even until they suddenly northeast decided to trade in and won the trade. That Thunderbird was quite good. That Thunderbird, it was good, but by that point they'd already won the game. It was simply securing yes. the win. Securing the win on the factory. Yep. All right. Well, that is the first round, because that was the bracket reset now. So we're moving on to the grand finals. I guess grand finals reset? I don't know. But 